What's going on, good people? Welcome to the Paul Rivera Podcast. I'm extremely excited for this guest we have on this show. As I've said before, when you can go by just one name, that means you've made it. My good friend Salehi joins me on the Paul Rivera Podcast. And we talk about his journey starting at Payless, him running down Yeezy in a New York street coming out of a taxi, and making it all the way to Versace and pitching his designs and vision to none other than the design legend, Donatella Versace. Hope you enjoy the show. Peace. So as we start this show, um, some of the viewers or listeners we've had, you know, I've heard me say this before. I think my definition of having made it isn't necessarily money, isn't necessarily followers or any other other nonsense. It's when you can go by one name. Huh. <laughs> and my, my guest today has uh, managed to do that. Like, you're Salehi. I don't know, man. Uh, it's a name that I, I didn't like the majority of my, of my childhood because... Um, I'd introduce myself to people and then it would turn into an enunciation class, you know, and uh, I would just, you know, a friend to the right of me would be like, I'm Frank. And then I'd be like, I'm Salehi. And they'd, be, they'd almost treat me like I had a disease. So for the longest time, I didn't like it. It was annoying. Introducing myself to people, uh, attendance, you know, if it was like an, a substitute teacher, mm -hmm. my, my friends were like, oh, yeah, they're going to put up with you know. Um, even so much though, so that in college I went by Sal, which I basically split the name in half. Really? I was just trying to completely get rid of that whole conversation of where are you from? What does it mean? Like I just uh -huh. wanted to meet people, keep it pushing, right? So I went mm -hmm. by Sal, which I'm obviously not like a Sal. I'm not an old white <laughs> Italian man, right? <laughs> right so right. It, it made sense for college, but then after I went to uh, by Salehi, and, uh, and now I love it. I feel like it's a designer's name for sure. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, this is the first time I'm hearing the, the one name thing. I yeah, guess, I guess one I'll name, man. It means you've made it, man. <laughs> like, it's it's interesting. I was having this conversation the other day about things, like, as you just referenced, things when you're a kid that you're embarrassed about or, like, you know, don't want to, you know, be as, not open as in the word, but something you're like, man, oh, fuck, my name or whatever mm -hmm, it is, mm -hmm. right? That when you grow older, you appreciate them, they become a badge of honor. Right? Absolutely. I so, mean, my parents always told me that they gave me that name because they thought that I was going to be something special. And as a kid, that just sounded like some, like, yeah, you know. Be all you can be. Exactly, <laughs> you know. But really, now it kind of makes sense. Um, I have a few, I have some regular name friends that really feel like their potential is being stifled by their name. I actually mm. had a conversation recently where someone said, you know, they felt like because their name was just simple that they wow. couldn't, you know, enter the world in the same way because, you know, if your name's Joe Schmo, then maybe... I personally feel like it's it's the work that you create, but no, no disrespect the to the Joes that exactly. are listening no, to. No, 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 that's a joke, that's a joke. So let's start from the beginning a little bit before we get into it. Get into it. Where's Salehi from, or, or as my my Cali friends say, where your mama stay? <laughs> where your mama stay? Where, where your, your daddy? Stay? Where your daddy stay? Um, so I grew up five blocks away from here. Okay, Dwayne Street. Uh, it was a loft. My dad was a photographer. The the first one fourth of the loft was uh, a photography studio. So from an influential standpoint, you know, I was around a lot of art and fashion and creativity and, uh, you know, just being like a downtown kid, there's just a lot of that around. And, and a lot of the time when I tell people I'm from Tribeca, they give me like a, ooh, oh, okay. But like, <laughs> really like Tribeca wasn't that neighborhood. Yeah, until, it wasn't Tribeca. Right. Until really like De Niro moved in, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which was maybe late 90s or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it really just used to be like an artist neighborhood. It was a lot of warehouses. They gave the spaces to artists for um, like rent control kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once artists make a neighborhood cool, that's when the, the money comes and mm -hmm. then, then the artists move out and that's always how it goes, you know. So um, grew up in this neighborhood. Uh, it was a great little community because, you know, it's a little busy during the day. You got the financial district, you got the um, city hall and all that. But then after six o'clock, it'd be like a ghost town. Yeah. And the majority of my life, I would tell people where I lived and they didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> like, it was kind of like once you got, you know, below 14th, there was this thing they heard about called Soho. And yeah. that wasn't even as popping as right. it is now. And then, you know, Tribeca didn't exist. So it really, it kind of had to be born. And uh, and now I guess it's like special. So you, you were saying off camera, off mic, that your pops, and you just said it, uh, was a photographer. What yes. was that like growing up, like that influence of your pops being a creative photographer? Well, so I would say the most interesting thing about it was that, uh, so, th so the loft had really high ceilings, but the, but the walls only went up halfway. So it was very open sound. Um. And my dad owned his business, so I would constantly hear him cold calling people, being like, hey, Mr. Blah, 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 like, you know, let's work. or you know, And I would always hear him uh, reaching out. 
And I, it's not even like I was really like listening in. I was playing PlayStation, whatever, being a kid. But I really think on a subconscious level, I kind of like I, I was absorbing the grind and the hustle and kind mm -hmm. of like what it takes to uh, to eat. Mm -hmm. And um, and I and I really think that I got a lot of culture from my dad just because he, you know, he was he, and he would also like take me to things like he I remember. Uh, what, what year was the, the NBA All-Star Game in New York? Like 99 or something like that? Mm. The first one? The first, yeah. When, when Mike, when Mike played. Yeah, it. I think it was like Oh, it had to be early. Yeah, I mean, we could check, we could check that. Well, so I think, well, what, I think well, I think it was 99, 98. Uh -huh. My dad shot for it and he brought. Your dad shot New York All-Star? Yeah, he shot New York oh, All-Star. And so then dope. he brought me as his, as his assistant. Oh, that's dope. But clearly I wasn't his assistant because <laughs> I looked exactly like him. I'm like 12 years old or something like that. So that was the last time he ever got to shoot for the NBA. <laughs> but, uh. But that you know those those were the the ways that he would kind of make sure that I was uh you know getting to just see the environment and mm -hmm. and, and kind of see uh what he, what he was doing you know his passion and then I think that was also important is that there are a lot of people that do a job for the check or because that's what their parents told them to do but my dad was doing his passion and and I really respected that because he was able to make um, a successful living um, while doing what he loved and you got to see it up front. Right, up, up, close up and front and personal, yeah. It's funny, we were, you know, obviously you've seen the episodes of The Shop that we've done, and mm -hmm. we had the one with Kevin Hart, and I think Mav asked him, like, what's that like, like having grown up with nothing and then raising kids that, you know, when you have everything, and he's yeah. like, it's the toughest thing as a yeah, parent. Yeah. He, you know, Kevin being Kevin, he was like, my daughter's like, I don't know, Dad. When I got here, we had a Benz. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know how you got yeah, it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what you took to. So you seeing and you hearing your pops you know, working like mm -hmm. food doesn't magically appear on the fucking table. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, so I'm sure I had an influence on you early on. on like, you got to get up and get it type thing. So. Like that, uh, the Chappelle joke where he's like, I came home from a dinner party and, and my son ran up to me with chicken grease on his face. <laughs> and he was like, chicken, dad, this is duck. <laughs> you know so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, one thing people may or may not know about you, it's like, you didn't just pick up a pencil and like start like sketching and shit. Like you're trained. You went to school. Like talk a little bit about your like your formal education. Uh, so uh, I had a childhood of just artistic talent. Um, if it was up to me, I probably would have majored in like drawing or painting or something like that. But thank God my parents told me to um, to you know choose. They were like choose architecture or choose industrial design. They wanted to make sure that I, I kind of went a route that they thought could yield me some kind of a paycheck. That's not to say that fine artists can't yield money, but um, it's probably a little bit more difficult of a road. Um, so I looked at architecture. I thought the cool, the models with the little trees, I thought that was really cool, but it was a lot of math and it was very like linear. So I, it, it didn't attract me as much. And then industrial design was like ridiculously broad. You know, you, you can design microphones, furniture or sneakers. I knew that, you know, I had a lifelong love for sneakers. I didn't know I necessarily wanted to be involved in a design sense, but I just knew that it made me feel a certain way and I devoted a lot of time to it. So it seemed like industrial design was the route. And uh, so I did that for five years um, at Syracuse. Uh, the, th the thesis year was the fifth year. So you had to do like an involved uh, thesis project. I did like sushi knives because I knew that my professors <laughs> wouldn't give me a good grade if I did sneakers, you know, stay, <laughs> staying in my comfort zone or whatever. Um, and uh, and then, yeah, and then and then it was really just about getting my feet wet and, and getting into the getting into the field. So my first job out of college was Payless, mm -hmm. which was probably at the opposite end of the spectrum of where I wanted to be. So let's talk about that, because that <laughs> that literally is the most surprising thing as I like anyone that's listening to watch the show. I do mm -hmm. zero research. You, I did the most. It was like 45 seconds on my way down here. <laughs> uh -huh. And I saw Payless and I was like, wait, I got to ask him about this. Like, yeah, yeah. For the, like, there's probably a generation listening that doesn't even know what Payless is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So talk a little about Payless, how that happened and what that experience was for you. So even, I'll just take a step back is that, um, you know, I wanted to be a sneaker designer, but really it was about Nike. That was the love. I've, I had been applying to Nike since I was probably 12 years old. Shed many tears over, you know, not ever acquiring, <clears throat> acquiring that job. And uh, there was like this, The Rock posted some video where he was talking about how he got drafted by the NFL. He played like a game or something, mm -hmm. broke his knee, let's say, I forget what he broke. And then they put him on a bus with $7 in his pocket. And he wanted to play in the NFL his entire life. He felt like his dreams were crushed. And he's young as shit, and right? And he's young like, as yeah. shit, all yep. his potential. And... Um, and then, you know, The Rock is now the highest paid box mm -hmm. office smash. He, he's blah, The blah. Rock. He's The Rock, right? <laughs> That's all you need to say. He's The Rock. So right. he ended the video by saying, sometimes the thing you really wanted to happen was the best thing that never happened. Mm. And um, that really, like, was super powerful to me and resonated with me because, you know, Nike was that thing for me. 
And I really thought that that was um, the only answer. And now, you know, my career is at a completely different trajectory and um, and path. And and if I got that Nike job, then who knows where I'd be now? So I think you know everything happens for a reason. And uh, I'm very happy with where I am. So, so at that point, when you get the pay less job, are you ex- are you excited? I'm, are you like I'm excited because I have a job. Yes. Right? Like I, I, sure I'm, I'm sure your dad was excited too. Exactly. Mom, dad, excited. <laughs> um, I'm making a paycheck. Mm-hmm. I have some disposable income. I don't have to like resell sneakers to get new sneakers. <laughs> like, you know, it's a new game, right? Right. Um, but it's not Nike. It's not really even, you know, flashy sneakers or anything. But at the same time, though, it was a paycheck and it was education because Payless does make every shoe. They make dress shoes, men's, women's, you know, formal, like everything. So I was really getting to learn about just the field you know Mm -hmm. i was working with some people that had actually been doing it for a long time and since they're constantly cranking out product on a pretty quick timeline i was just learning the tricks of the trade um actually at that job there was really nothing cool happening there but there was this one dude kevin leong do you know who he is i do not he works with uh he worked with like russell simmons and the simmons family okay and uh he was at payless no he was consulting and i didn't even know what this was this consulting thing meant right but this this dude walks like in. you got a check and you don't come to work every day every he came once and, I, and then i asked him how much he got and i was like what and he comes in and he's just like fit was great he's wearing a wood briefcase which is low-key was how i got inspired and started wearing a wood briefcase that was like my way of getting on the scene showing up with a wood briefcase right um and then, yeah, I mean, I wasn't that happy there, but it was like it was probably only about three, three, four months. And okay. I was like learning a lot. And it was just even crazy for me as, you know, coming out of school to see my sketches become tangible mm. like that in itself. Like, fuck a swoosh. Like, mm-hmm. this is real. Like mm-hmm. someone on the street is wearing my work. Like, mm-hmm. so that was that was probably the first uh, like moment because you were saying, like, what was what is success? And I feel like success is like different things at different points in your life. Yeah. Right. So like at that point in my life just seeing someone on the street with my shoe, like that was success. I made it. Yeah. Like you didn't, like I, I was watching your interview with Omar and you were saying uh, like your first Nike job, you got like 70K and you were like, mom. We did it. We did quit, it. Mom. And I know, and I know what you mean by that quit. because there are these different points where you just feel like you have like accomplished that thing. But very similar to what Omar said is I'm wired kind of like uh, once I accomplish something, I'm kind of on to the next in regards to uh, just like milestones, mm. right? So like that, once I accomplished that, it, it was kind of whatever, and I want to accomplish the next thing. And what was the landscape like for like young African American designers at that? Were there a ton of them? Were there people you could look at and be like, "Oh man, like I want to be that, or I can be that"? Like at the time, I would. You know, it's strange. I would say at that time, I don't even think the conversation was a was a race conversation because there wasn't even that much visibility to designers. Period. Period. Okay. I mean, you had you had Tinker. There was like like you know the OGs like. Uh, uh, Eric Avar and, mm-hmm. and uh, Bruce Kilgore, and but those, those guys are like legends. Oh, yeah, right? You can't even legends, touch those right? guys. And then like, the, yeah. on the, maybe the lower tiers, like a Mark Dolce or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But other than that, there really wasn't much, and Got you it. really would only see a picture of them in like once a year in slam kicks, <laughs> right? And you'd be like, oh shit, you know what I mean? Like, and that was very rare, right? So mm-hmm. that behind the scenes moment. So, um, so the whole conversation of a, a black designer, uh, for instance, that's that's more of a current conversation. Got you. You know what I mean? And and back then, I was just looking like if I saw a, a picture of a designer drawing, like I could stare at that for hours because wow. you know this isn't the internet. This is just magazines. You know. So, so for you as a kid, was that your Michael Jordan poster, like seeing a designer oh, absolutely. sketches? Absolutely. Like- just any any aspect of that. I've talked about this in a, in a few interviews, but. Nike used to have this campaign where they would like show the new shoe and there'd be a phone number you could call Mm -hmm. and then like the player would pick up. Mm -hmm. But as a kid, you didn't know it wasn't the player. (laughs) So I'd be like, Jason, Jason kid? (laughs) And they'd be like, oh, it's the Air Zoom Flight 595, thank you. You And it was like a whole, it like, it really created like a feeling. And and, uh, I really feel like that's what like design and just the the whole world kind of comes back to the, is like that emotional feeling Mm -hmm. of when like either you see something on the shelf for the first time or like, you know, you see LeBron in a commercial, you see Lil Penny talking to Anthony Hardaway. It's all these moments that like make you feel something. Mm-hmm. The Nike basketball freestyle commercial. Yeah. You remember that? Like, of course. What that, right? Of like, course. and then going out into your backyard and, yep. you know, like, I don't know. So, so really it's about, I think, creating those moments and, uh, yeah. No, I love it. So, um, fast forwarding, Kohan. Kohan. How, how's that happen? So, Kohan was probably like my first, uh, I would say, quote unquote, real gig, right? So, at the time, they're owned by Nike. Mm-hmm. Um, There's uh, so actually, no, I came in just as kind of like a freelancer, I think. So I was just there to like do a few projects. But there was this new Nike designer. His 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 first day was my second day. And his name was Jeff Henderson. Jeff. He was he's a huge, a huge, uh, huge part of my career 
I was, if I, I don't really believe in mentors because I feel like you should be soaking it up from everywhere. But if I did, he would absolutely be that. Um, and uh, so he was he was walking around the office. I'd never heard of him before, but I heard he was at Nike for 15 years and he was wearing these these one of one I'd never seen before Jordan one. So I was like, I got I got to talk to this guy. Right. So I, I knew he was getting toured around the office. And at the time, I don't sketch as much anymore, but I'm, I'm particularly good at, at sketching. So I knew he was going to be walking by. So I took some of my sketches and I kind of like opened it up and I was like, <laughs> right. So he walked by, um, he saw the sketches and he was like, hmm. And, and then that was pretty much the end of it. You're like, oh, these old things? I didn't even realize <laughs> oh, they were out. <laughs> you know? So uh, and then, yeah, I, I forget how it happened. But, but very soon after that, he hired me. He hired he, you to Kohan. Right? He hired me full time because I was you. like maybe on a four week by four week kind of thing. Okay. You know? And uh, he was starting an innovation team because I guess because they were Nike owned, they were trying to you know capitalize on um, the opportunity of like function led uh, formal footwear and um, you know injecting Nike technology into the Kohan brand, right? So we were we were uh, just trying to pull in a younger consumer. It was really interesting also because like I, this was the time that I was like just entering the professional world. And I was still kind of figuring out like my, how do you dress, right? Like I could right. dress like, you know, walking down the street, but how do you dress in an office, right? right. So like, I was still figuring that out. So then um, our team created this shoe called the Lunar Grand. I remember it was like this like wingtip with the lunar bottom. Yeah. And that shoe was really interesting because, uh, you know, it, it, it maintained the seriousness of a dress shoe, but it felt like a sneaker. Mm -hmm. And that was huge because like, you know, my relationship with dress shoes was like what you wore to church and it was right. uncomfortable. And as soon right. as you got home, you had to rip them off your feet. Church, court and funerals. Boom. Right. Yep. And a wedding. And yep. a wedding. Right. Yep. So like I just, you know, it was a it was a really interesting time because now you could like wear dress shoes, get that respect, feel like an adult, mm -hmm. but then kind of like get that sneaker feel. I remember one time I ran for the train and then I looked down like. Oh, well, I'm wearing like dress shoes, you know? So right. that was like a moment. And they had a dope pop, right? It was like the yellow, the yeah, pink, green, the blue. Pink. It was yeah. all kinds of stuff. We like yeah. collaborated with um, Hiroshi, like mm -hmm. Fragment. Um, it was a lot of momentum. It was a cool time. Uh, and then, uh, so that was maybe about three and a half years. And that was a, a, a really important time just because Jeff is was like kind of like my, my Yoda or something. Like, mm. you know, he's, he's a really smart, well-read, just talented designer. And... Uh, and he just kind of like broke me down, broke down all the bad like traits of a designer I had. And then he just like built me back up from a very mm. pure place. And at that point, you're soaking up game. Like, you're Absolutely. not like, yo, I'm dope. I know everything. Mm. I'm looking for the next gig. You're well, actually, soaking up game. In the beginning, I, I kind of came in a little bit, you know, just with a little ego. Of thinking course. Like, oh, they just hired me to call, huh? Like, well, oh, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you like, see me. Yeah, you see me, right? <laughs> so like. You know, he had to like he had to take me down a peg or two, and someone that's been in Nike for 15 years can do that. Yeah, he's, he's got sentence. rings. He's got rings. Exactly. Yeah. He, he just had to like show him yeah, quick. He you got know. Rings. Um, so yeah, he did that really quickly, and then you know he had to he he humbled me. Um, he taught me so much. He uh, he helped me. He he taught me how to just move in the corporate environment because there's an art to that. Mm. CC don't CC BCC. Yeah. Tell yeah. him don't tell him enemy yeah. friend. You know yeah. all that. Like that's a whole thing. And that's an art. It's, you know within itself. It's like, an art yeah. within itself. Yeah. Um, so he he you know I owe I owe that guy everything like and he wow. knows that so like he, he you know he's he's really like he's put me even the position I'm in right now is like from what the position he put me in back wow. then wow so yeah so you're there you're at Kohan three and a half years give three or and a half years and then Buscemi so, so no so basically Cole so Nike sells Kohan yep storm clouds start moving in mm. um, there's this one day where they let go a lot of people. I was scared. Jeff knows how I'm wired. He knew that if I found out they were about to cut everyone, I just would have ran home. I laughed out. So he pulled me to the side and he was like, you're fine. Like, they're about to let go of some people, but like, you're good. But then what happened was they moved me from the innovation team to the, to the design team. Um, and I felt like I kind of rolled down the hill because I spent the last three years proving myself through execution, design, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm young. So, the, you know, all these wins are important because it's, you know, of it's, course. Or it's building my the building uh, blocks. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. And then this new regime comes in, they just see a young black kid and they pretty much, they moved me to the men's design team. I didn't feel like I was getting the same amount of respect. And then this other brand offers me for the first time in my life, six figures. It was not even, it was, it was in the realm of pay less. I don't even want to say the job. Like if you want to look at my LinkedIn or if you, I don't want to say the company, if you want to look to look at my LinkedIn, go for it. But, um, they offered me six figures and I was like, this isn't what I want to be doing at all. But like, I see the storm clouds moving in over here. They're offering me loot. Why not? Right. Mm -hmm. So I go over there. It was like it was a shit show. Like, how I, soon do you realize? Very soon. Very okay. soon. It was it was a it was a family company. 
it just wasn't what I was used to, and and it just it just it was like really low end product. But I just saw the money. I was like six figures. Like it was basically the seventy k moment. I was yep. like, yep. sure, we, like we did it. Brooklyn. We did it. <laughs> yeah, we did it again. <laughs> we you know. Did it. Um, so, <laughs> you know, that was about a year, and then there's this brand, Greats Bushimi. Mm-hmm. So this was the first time that I felt like I was like slowly moving towards like where I wanted to be. Okay. Um, it was a startup company. It was owned by Bushimi, who had this brand, Gourmet. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the first brand that I saw. So, like, you know, I was kind of like an addict for like, um, or addicted to like Nike, Reebok, Adidas, all that kind of stuff. And I never really saw any other brand where I was like, I, or you almost wouldn't even touch another right, brand because it was like, this is like, exist, and yes. then like Gourmet comes out and he had this shoe called the like Quadici. It was like a duck boot with like an air bubble on the mm-hmm. bottom and it was just different and it was working. And like the way they were putting out the images, it was just beautiful. And I was like, it, A, it taught me, wow, like you don't have to be one of these massive conglomerates to, to put out like beautiful product. But then it also just made me really interested about this guy, Bushimi. And like, I was like, I want to, I actually remember reaching out to like Gourmet at some point, I think. But then when I heard about Greats, I was like, this is fresh, this is new. Um, and it seemed like a cool opportunity. So I, I reached out, met with them, got interviewed. And then it was great because this was the first um, gig where I felt like I was doing a little bit of the educating and I was given the reins. Got it. You know, I was kind of getting l- little brothered at every other spot, but mm-hmm. this was a spot where I was actually getting to execute. I was getting to use my relationships to, uh, you know, collaborate. We collaborated with, like, Only and Pierre and, and what Moss. Did, and what did that, I mean, you're still a young guy during mm-hmm. this time, right? Like, what did that feel like? That you feel like you'd arrived? That you feel like, okay, this is... A little bit, yeah. Okay. I did, I did. Um, I mean, it had been, I don't know, maybe, like, five years. This was this was the first time I was really having fun. Got you. You know, to, to have a collaboration with my buddy, you know, Mike and Julian, who own Only, and mm-hmm. see, like, you know, I respected that brand, and to see our shoe with them, and I know that I facilitated that, that, was, that felt amazing to do a collaboration with Kirby from Pierre Moss and see, you know, this startup sneaker brand, it's now walking down the runway. And again, Mm -hmm. I facilitated that. Um, You know, I I, I really do believe it is about the team, but in this instance, I was literally getting to make these decisions and it Mm -hmm. felt great and it, and uh, it was, it was a first. So it just felt like I was getting to like flex new muscles Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, it was just it was just a different kind of opportunity for me. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So speaking of different opportunities, 2015, a man by the name of Kanye West. Yes, yes. Right? How you go and work for Yeezy. Mm-hmm. How's that happen? So so the guy Jeff I mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. So I would keep in touch with him. We would just have, you know, lunch every now and then. And uh, we were just like eating burritos one time. And he was like, you know what, I'm, you know what I've been up to? And I was like, no, what have you been up to? And he was like... I'm designing for Kanye, and I was like, I didn't want to like, cause he he would always give me shit for like getting too like, like hyped about you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I just like kind of kept eating my burrito, like, oh, you know. it's cool, it's cool, <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. cool whatever. Pass the hot sauce, yeah, exactly, cool. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but then he was like, you know, he was like, yeah, he wants someone to come out to LA, and you know, Jeff was older, he has three kids, he's like grounded here, so um, he wasn't trying to move, so he asked me if I was interested, and I was like, of course, and I, I had just done a little like design shred for this brand, uh, United Nude. They have really forward footwear. And uh, so I had a bunch of like, kind of like forward, just interesting designs I thought that would resonate with him. So I put it together, sent it to him. It took maybe, I don't know, like five, six months, I assumed. I was like at the you know bottom of his priority list with all the things he's working on. And then eventually I got the call like to like come out and just like come in for a meeting. So I'm like, okay. So first thing is like, what do you wear to meet Kanye West? You're gonna go meet Kanye. I'm gonna go meet Kanye. Uh-huh. Like, what am I gonna wear, right? can't flex for Kanye, right? You got to just like, so So I just wore like all black and some like Japanese vans I had to show him I got a little, just sprinkle a little on top, right? <laughs> uh-huh. And then like I was just, I was in this meeting. It was like in a... What's he wearing? Do you remember? Uh, no. Actually, no. It was like black. Just all black. I think gotcha. it was like all black and maybe one of his sneakers. And then uh, I was in this meeting. It was like a bunch of Adidas people. Yay. I think Virgil was there. Um, and I was just, I, I didn't want to say anything because like it felt like this was like maybe the eighth meeting of, you know, a bunch of meetings and I didn't want to just be this mystery person being like make it blue you know what i mean so i just like kept my mouth shut but i had some like locked and loaded comments like ready to go so just in case anyone spoke to me gotcha. i was gonna i was ready to gotcha. let off I got this thing five safety. syllable yeah. words yes. right so at one point he turned to me and he was like what do you think about all this and i was like oh well the juxtaposition of the blah, blah. and i just like went off <laughs> and uh and then i and he just kind of nodded to me he was kind of like you know so uh again maybe a few months passed and then i got the call it was like happening mm-hmm. So um, first, I lived in a hotel for a month in Santa Monica, which was for a New Yorker actually a pretty 
nice transition because, you know, I see the ocean on vacations, but to right. wake up and see right. the ocean mounds, it was just like, boardwalk. didn't make yeah, sense, yeah, right? Yeah. So like me also having just the fear of, you know, cha- changing lives completely, like this was a nice kind of transition. So I started working there. I remember my first day, I'm like tripping out. Like I have an office in the Yeezy office. Like it's mm. like insane. And what, then, what's the... Um, what's the vibe like in Yeezy office? Like, is it, is it young? Is it, there's a lot going on? Um, Big, that, crew, small? I'm gonna keep it surface level so I don't get sued. Yeah, but like, you know, it was definitely a diverse mix of young okay. talent. Got it. Okay. Um, and it was definitely, you, you felt it. Like, actually, one thing we didn't touch about, we, we could talk about whatever, but like, right after the pay last time, I worked for Dame Dash at DD172, which was right down here on, uh, actually, it was yes, Dwayne Street. To the Lower East Side, yeah. No, Dwayne Street in Tribeca. Like, right oh, there. yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, you're right, yes. And, uh, and that was the same thing. It was just like a young, like Andy Warhol type factory of like young, diverse, beautiful, just creative, talented, hungry people. That's probably the most important mm. word is hungry, right? Because like not that many people are hungry these days. When mm. you can find those people, it's like, Trust, yep. it's, it's valuable. Um, so that's what that was. It was just a lot of people just getting after it. And I remember like the first day, I'm like setting up my desk. Oh, you but know. before you go to you, oh, so sorry, work, go working for Dame, what's working that for like? Dame. He's a legend. I mean, he, people so, feel mixed about him these days, but you can't legend. erase legend. what that man's done. The funny thing is like Dame, like I watch a lot of his interviews just to get those gems. And the other uh-huh. day I was like, wait a minute, I know him. And I hit him up, <laughs> got some gems on the phone. Just because uh-huh. like, you know, he's he's really, he's he's smart. Um, so with Dame, I, uh, I was working for this company right after Payless. It was like a licensee. Again, don't care to speak about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I know, too. I'm going to ask you off. Okay, uh, please. No, I, ask I me. I do know. So, uh, and then I hear that Dame Dash opens up this space called DD172 in Tribeca. And it's like two blocks from where I grew up. I know exactly where it is. I walk by. Weed smoke just billowing out. I'm like, this is crazy, right? <laughs> like, I'm like fresh out of college. This is crazy. This is Tribeca. It's crazy, right? Um, so... I remember I just would like start going. There was like art exhibits and stuff like that. Like music shows. Music shows. Yeah. They, they had this thing called Under 100 where they would have a, a, a concert in the basement. Mm-hmm. But because of the fire code, it could only be 100 people. So mm-hmm. it would just gotcha. be like 90 whatever people. Most currency, styly, or styly. Uh, it, was, it was cool. Um, and so I wasn't a part of it yet, but I was just kind of trying to be seen, you know, walking in with my wood briefcase, making sure people <laughs> saw me, you know. And... Uh, and then one day I went to Dwayne Re- Dwayne Reed and I bought one of those TV dinner tables mm-hmm. and I just put it in the design studio and I was like I work here now, Dave Chang, Dave Barnett, those were the designers. Hold up, hold up. So you go, you don't work there. You haven't interviewed. You haven't been hired. No, you no. can't be hired because you haven't interviewed. Absolutely. You go and you buy one of those TV dinner fold out yeah. wooden tables. Yeah. And you take it to DD one seventy two. Yeah. You open it. <laughs> yeah. And you say I work here now. One hundred percent. I mean, I wasn't a stranger. I'd been chilling there, you know, putting in the the FaceTime or whatever. But oh. I was just like. I saw a lot of other people just kind of being scared, and I was like, I kind of wanted to like capitalize on this because this felt it felt special, mm-hmm. and it felt it just felt different. And I just come from like really just corporate like whitewashed environments that I was not enjoying, and I was wearing like pleated slacks, and you know. And uh, actually, this is another funny story. We can get to this, but I, I met Kanye when I worked at Payless, which is the funny thing. <laughs> How's that happen? So so. <laughs> so at Payless, I was saying, uh, so this was before I learned how to dress in like the, the, the corporate environment, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm wearing like, you know, long pleated slacks, like square toe dress shoes. Like I got a button down, down to my knees, like looking like wild, right? <laughs> at, and, while you're at Payless. Payless. And so I'm, I'm uh, at lunch. This is like maybe 18th and 5th Avenue, right? Okay. Walking to lunch. I see a cab go by. It's Kanye. I'm like sure of it. And this is back, this is like, He's like a unicorn back then, so I was like, oh my God, right? So he turns the corner, he goes like two blocks, and he gets out. And I was like, oh shit. It is Kanye. It's Kanye, right? <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, I get out the, I like, oh no, he gets out the car, I run down the block. He's about to walk into a building, and I'm like, I was like, Kanye, Kanye, I'm a designer. Put me on, please, please. He, he looked me up and down, and as soon as I knew at that moment when he looked me up and down based on what I was wearing, I was like, fuck. But he had Don C take my information, and so then I ran back to my computer. I was like, oh, man, I made it. Again, I made it. <laughs> right? Email me any minute. Refresh, yeah. refresh. Never happened. <laughs> Have you reminded Don of that since? Not, you know, it's funny. Not Don. And we, our officers are in the same building. But uh-huh. I, did, I, did, I told Ye uh-huh. when we worked together. He wasn't that amused because I assume he gets that story. I'm by, sure like, everyone runs every up on him. Right. That, you know? right. But uh, for me, that was crazy. To, like, it was kind of a full circle moment. But mm-hmm. back to Dame. Um, yeah, I mean, they knew me, and I just put the desk in, and I think they kind of respected that move, and I kind of mm-hmm. knew where Dame, the kind of the pedigree that Dame came from, and I think they respected that. I um, love that. So I had a stint there, and I was working on graphic design, and we were like doing some clothing, and just being in the environment, even just being around, like you know, I was Black Star, like it's huge Most Def fan, to like yeah. be around Most, and like 
It was like insane. So yeah. I was just like in, really just geeking off of being fresh out of college and being in this Dope. really free, open environment where they're making things. And there's a legend like Dame Dash who, I mean, we we're super cool now, but at the time I was like, ridiculously scared of him because it's like mm-hmm. Dame Dash. It was Dame the, Dash. The dude We've all seen people, the videos. Yeah, I was, yeah, yelling <laughs> yeah. people in the boardroom. Like, yeah. I wasn't trying to make eye contact, you know? <laughs> but like. Uh, so you end up at you Yeezy. Know, and you're saying the energy and the vibe, there's just a youthful energy, everyone hungry, everyone working. Mm-hmm. You know, um, At this point, what are you doing when you first started Yeezy? So I was brought in to um, basically do the men's footwear. Okay. I had a counterpart. Um, she was from Celine. Her name was Lucette, who I believe is still there. She did the women's. I did the men's. And ultimately, um, you know, we were there to bring Kanye's ideas to fruition. What was it like? What can you tell us? Because I'm sure there's a million things you can't. What can you tell us about just the process of working with Ye as a creative and just what that um, process is like? Um, it was interesting just because, you know, I would say working with different creatives, they care about different things, right? You know, you might work with one creative that's like obsessed with color. Um, and you might work with another creative that's obsessed with, you know, I don't know, material. He was he was really big on and I and I and I really believe that um, that the experience I had with him has really affected um, how I've moved forward with design. So let's get to Versace. Yes, like the story's become a story of legend at this point, <laughs> right? Yeah. The, like cold call, email, mm-hmm. or was it LinkedIn? I believe LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. One night you randomly and I'm gonna tell you what. I, I mean, I respect you as my friend, as, as creative, as you know, the legend you're becoming, but I respect that most people wouldn't have the courage to send the email in the first place, but you sent the email and had your shit together, like facts, you know, information, why this made sense. It wasn't just a love your brand, man, like mm-hmm. hire me, I'm dope. Like talk a little bit about like the thought of sending the email and what you were hoping to accomplish with it. Well, first and foremost, I mean, you've heard like the 10, what is it, the 10,000 hour rule, right? Mm-hmm. Where if any human devotes 10,000 hours to anything they can master it. Well, if that's true, I got like 40,000 under my belt for sneakers, right? So like this is something I've been bleeding, breathing, living forever. So like it wasn't even like I really had to do too much research. It's just like mm-hmm. this is who I've been. You know, I have the amount of hours I spent like 3 a.m. like on Nike talk, you know, nerding out, you know, camp, like just I come from that, right? I'm not ashamed of that. That's where I come from. Um, so the fact that like, now that you know i'm getting this opportunity to potentially take you know take a step up you know i felt like i should capitalize um so basically after yay i kind of didn't know what was next because you know i felt like that was like the zenith of footwear right like Mm -hmm. anytime they released any color it was like the internet would stop so i was like where do i go after this so after about a year of just freelancing figuring things out um i just i am on linkedin and it's funny, I, I spoke to a few people about uh, if I should be too transparent in telling this story, but I think I should because it's good. So I was actually on the toilet at the time, <laughs> right? And, uh, and like, so you know, you know what the butterfly effect is? I do not. So the butterfly effect is like, you know, if I, if I move this, this potentially could set off a whole chain reaction, uh, pun intended, of, you know, events. Events, yep. Even the smallest thing. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy to me that if maybe I didn't eat the burrito or taco or whatever I was eating <laughs> that put me on the toilet at that moment, mm-hmm. the LinkedIn algorithm could have been different. Who knows? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think about that often, right? So anyway, um, I'm on LinkedIn. I see a designer who goes by the name of Dean. I forget his last name. I think he's at Bottega now. I don't think he's there anymore. He's, no, he's definitely not with us anymore, but I think he's at Bottega. Thank you very much, Dean. You changed my life. Um, and I just kind of proposed an opportunity. I said, uh, the sneaker industry is a multi-billion dollar business. What did Dean do at the time at so Versace? He was the head of Versus Versace. Got you. He was the design director of Versus Versace. Okay. Um, you don't know him from a can of paint. You just well, find so actually, him. Actually, coincidentally, I found out once I had interviewed, I found out that he worked at Easy as well. Oh, and wow. And that, that was the small worldedness of it all. Which is, by the way, have you seen, before you continue the Versace, mm. have you seen the uh, Chinatown Market tea? I have seen that. I have seen They that. just sent it to me. Yeah, yeah. And... You know, I'll make sure in the edit that we show the tea, but it's yeah. like, it's basically like Yeezy's all-star team, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And it was Kanye's all-star team. And it just shows like, I guess you could say his influence or whatnot, but the people um, that, it, like Mav and I always joke that, that we graduated from the University of Nike, like the people that graduated from the University are like Kanye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like when you saw that tea that you bug out, like explain to people what the tea is and so it's basically it. a, a t-shirt that kind of looks like the uh, you know n- Dream Team '94 kind of illustration yep. '92 '92 yep. and uh, and it's just you know it's Virgil, me, Heron, Yay or Yay, Jerry, Heron, Dimna, yeah, Heron, 
Matt Williams, Ivan, Don C. I think that's all of them. Yeah. I think that's all. But basically, it's all the people that worked under Ye that are now kind of like of significance in the fashion space. And it's really, cra- it's kind of crazy to see the amount of influence he's, he's had. You know, he's really, we've all kind of like, you know, we're all in a different kind of bucket yeah. of the industry. And it's, it's really crazy to think that imagine if that was one company. Yeah, right? like, I, I got, it's funny you say that. I got, uh, Mike sent me the tea, the Chinatown market tea. I want to say literally like three days ago, mm-hmm. right? And I saw it, and the tea's cool. It's a cool tea. I was blown away by what you're saying. I'm mm-hmm. like, holy shit, like this is a generation of amazing creators exactly, and people yeah. that, you know, um, maybe 10 years ago, you know, there wasn't a place for them in this world. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I quickly went to, damn, if these dudes stood together, good luck to every other brand. Exactly. Like, that's scary. Exactly. Like, super so, scary. Super scary. So do you guys realize that? Is there a fraternity kind of, sort of, in a way? Uh, well, I wouldn't say so. I mean, I would say that like all the people in those in that company, or on that t-shirt, were there at different times. Got it. I was probably the most recent. Okay. And also probably the shortest stint. Okay. You know, like a Virgil was with him for like 10 yeah. plus years. Yeah. You know, um, Don. And it, Don, yeah. like, to present day. Yeah. So, um, there's definitely a mutual respect. You know, there's really aren't too many too many of us, especially of color, doing it in this industry, mm-hmm. and that are known, respected, and and you know, moving forward. So, do you think Ye? And obviously, I'm asked just your opinion because you don't. There's no way of knowing, or maybe mm-hmm. he has told you. You think Ye is proud of that and realizes the role he's played? One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. I I think that. Uh, yeah, and I don't even think he's done it intentionally necessarily. I think mm-hmm. it's more that, you know, he is. You know, people throw around the word create like genius, but I will give him creative genius. And, uh, you know, he's really good and he has a lot of ideas and he's a forward thinker and he's an innovator. And, you know, for us all to be in the positions we are in and having been under him, I, I have a lot to, you know, I, I owe him a lot. Mm-hmm. Him and Jeff. Those are him, Jeff, and maybe this guy, Dean. Respect it. Yeah, yeah. Respect it. So, Versace, so you eat the burrito. You're eat on LinkedIn. Burrito. You're so, on LinkedIn. Uh, so, yeah, I, you know, I, I kind of propose the opportunity. I say the sneaker industry is a multi billion dollar business. Traditionally, that consumer has always gone for, gone for Nike, Reebok, Adidas, just like I said. Mm-hmm. Um, but within the last five years, behind the education of like Raph Simmons, Adidas, Nike, Comme de Garcon, uh, you know, now there's been a, a mass like education that's happened. Yep. And now this consumer is aware of the fact that fashion houses make sneakers. And I was like, ultimately, that's like an opportunity for you guys. You guys have such strong heritage, <clears throat> so much hi- history, such a strong brand identity. It's like such an opportunity. Um, I didn't think I'd hear back, like lit- literally just digitally phishing, you know, closed my phone, went, went about my day. Three days later, I'm contacted and I'm told that um, my ideas are loved and that they want me to come out to LA or to uh, Milan, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like a little confused because like, <laughs> I'm fishing, right? So like sometimes you fish and you're like, what is this? You know, right, so I'm right. like, so I was just gonna go out there with like, you know, a few pages of trend, slide it across the table, this is what I think is cool. But then strangely, like the week leading up, I had some really influential conversations where uh, someone was like, you know, do some sample design work, don't assume they know you can design, you know, put some, mm. put some work in there. And I was like a little confused about designing for free, but they were like, no, like don't make assumptions, like put it in there. Someone was like, um, do some market research see what's selling, go to the store, see what's like working so they can see that you've like done your research. Again, probably wouldn't have done that if someone didn't tell me to. Someone else reminding me that there aren't too many people that look like me and you in this high fashion space so mm-hmm. that it's bigger than me and I could be paving a way for someone else so to take it seriously and this isn't like a game. So what was gonna be two pages turned into 40 pages and I went out there and presented on design and marketing and like everything. And again, for 40,000 hour rule or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, I just, these are things I just knew. So it wasn't even like I did a bunch of research, I was just like, just spitting it out right <clears throat> so went out there um presented to donatella what's that like uh so like oh you could she's done it she's royalty yeah she is 100 percent right? like, let's, let's, let's be clear she's she royalty she is 100 percent royalty um i would say i had to do maybe do a little bit of give myself a little bit of education on her significance because i didn't go to school for fashion so i was 100 percent you know familiar with who she was and of course and what she was but maybe the significance and the royalty part is what i had to kind of like learn about um but she's such a sweetheart and again she changed my life these are these are they're again talking about those made it moments like she 100 percent changed my life and she she's amazing and 
and she's been nothing but like sweet to me ever since I joined the company because you obviously see movies like The Devil Wears Prada and of course. having no, you know, no eye contact. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah like or not, just not even having any like visibility to the high fashion space. You don't know what that's going to be like. Like mm -hmm. you don't know if like if, if that is that movie true. Like how right. does that work? Right. Not true, at least for this brand. Right. Um. So what's the interview like? Like you go in there, is it you and her? You, just her, me and her. Oh just wow. Just me and her. Maybe she had like one of her assistants there, wow. but it was just me and her. I presented. She she loved it. Um. And then she hired me on the spot, which was like unexpected. I thought she maybe wanted some ideas or something or consulting. So from the moment you send that email, mm -hmm. how soon after are you in the room with her? Like two or three weeks. <laughs> two or three weeks. Yeah. And she hires you on the spot. On the spot, yeah. Like what's your reaction to like... Have you seen The Pursuit of Happiness? Yes, I have. You know that scene when where he goes outside? <laughs> <laughs> That was basically it. You do the ugly cry. One hundred percent ugly cry. You keep it cool in the room because I, it was really getting to a point where like my money was starting to to uh, deplete. I wasn't sure where I was wanted yeah, to go. Yeah, we all been there. Yeah, of you know? course. Um, and I really, yeah, I was confused. And then this happened, and it just was like extremely unexpected. I never even was really considering high fashion. Like I, mm -hmm. it was always Nike, Nike, Nike. And then so I'm hired on the spot, and then even. Beyond that, you know, then we started discussing like what the position was going to, like how it was going to work. Like, am I moving to Milan? They were very, like strangely, not strangely, but uh, refreshingly casual about it. Mm -hmm. um, we'll figure it out. Like, we'll yeah, just, exactly. We'll they were like, do you want to move here? Do you want to consult? Like, what do you want to do? And, and then I took a shot in the You're dark. You're like, I don't know. No, just I know. I was like, <laughs> I was like, can I have my own office in LA? And then I'll come here once a month for meetings. And they were like, sure. And I was like, like, oh shit, you went for that? Yeah. Well, I didn't. I, mean, I don't know about that, but I was definitely like, because I'd never even heard of that before. You know, like mm -hmm. maybe a creative director of whatever brand, but I didn't even know that could be possible. Mm. They were like, sure, dope. I couldn't believe it. Did my pursuit of happiness cry out? I was like, stunned. Could like didn't no. never, never like saw this in a million years. So do you think does your life change in that moment? I'm, I'm not talking money, mm -hmm, any of that mm -hmm. stuff, but does your life day to day change? Uh. I wouldn't say I don't think it changed. I think maybe when I created the first shoe there, it changed okay. a little bit because then you, it was just kind of like a feeling. So like I have the job and now it's time to get to work. Right. Got gotcha. you. And I know that just being familiar with the sneaker space, the sneaker consumer, that I need to create something that's basically going to be the, the brand yelling from the mountaintops. We do sneakers now. Mm -hmm. Right. So how do I do that? Which sounds easy in hindsight. I, I don't even know. It, it, like, I, I mean, I knew that I had to create something to get attention. I just didn't know that what I was going to create was going to sell so well. Got you. And can I ask you, again, tell me what you can and can't share. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, they, you know, Donatella, Versace hires you. You're going to do, you're going to create this sneaker. Um, what are the, feel, like, what's the, like, um, like, I was talking to Jason Petrie one time, right? At Nike, he LeBron. designs LeBron's, mm -hmm. right? And he was saying, like, even within his designs, they tell him, hey, you're going to use this technology. Mm -hmm. Now you mm -hmm. can get busy around this mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. When you're designing the first shoe, which we'll get into in a second, it's like, was it blank slate? Like, Essentially, I mean, it was kind of like uh, on some, like, I'm not a Star Wars fan, but, like, the Force. It's like, with great power comes great responsibility, right? So I felt like it was up to me to, like, respect foster and like maintain the heritage of the brand mm -hmm. because like you know in theory like I could create just something ridiculous that has a Versace logo on it but it's not the brand right so it's just more like we're chasing something mm -hmm. so I kind of like had to take a step back I looked at kind of the three brand elements which was the Medusa uh, the Barack print which is the right the floral yep. gold black you've seen right and then the Greco which is that kind of like linear got you right <clears throat> So, and then I'm like, can any of these things be functional? And that's kind of like the industrial design degree coming back, right? Because I'm, I'm, I like to uh, solve problems with design, right? And not just like create for no reason. So I knew the Medusa couldn't be functional because it's a face, right? And then like the Greca is pretty rigid. Um, I, I didn't think that would work as well. But then like the chain I thought was super interesting, right? The, oh, I didn't mention that. I said the Barack. I'm sorry. I meant the chain. Mm -hmm. um, I thought the chain was a really interesting shape. So I started looking at a bunch of chains. And then I saw the Cuban link chain. And I was like, I thought it was really interesting that it was flat on the bottom. And I was like, wow, that could be like a functional shape. Mm. So then I just started kind of sketching, started uh, playing with clay. And then I worked with my 3D guy to uh, you know, bring my sketch to life. And then I was actually able to go out for my first meeting in Milan with a 3D print of this idea. So, and you know, 
communicating design work with with a three D thing instead of like pointing to a piece of paper and yeah. saying, "Oh, well, if you can imagine, this is going to be fire." Exactly. <laughs> this was right. This was literally like boom. Right. I didn't say anything, and she loved it. So before you get into that room, yes. you now you Salehi have a three D rendering of your design. Yes. Are you like, oh shit? I think I got it. I do. Like I. Just because I've been a, like a student of, of sneakers for so long, I do. But then at the same time, you know, when you've been like staring at something for so long, it, it can, you can even write your, you write your name you 200 your times own and you head, think you right. spell it wrong. Yeah, right? you get in your own head. Yeah. So I wasn't necessarily sure, but I thought, you know, it definitely respected the brand. This was, was different and I felt like it could definitely compete in the space. So I show it to her. She loves it, right? Wow. So then I create an upper. Um, and then actually, so I create an upper, we get, the, we get the mold of the outsole, and then the outsole looked so fire, I was like, I gotta redo the upper completely, because it just, I was like, this is a whole other opportunity. I, it almost like surprised me a little bit. I was like, this is, uh, this is, I think this is gonna be something. So create the sneaker, and then going back to just being a student of sneakers, or footwear, I know kind of like the ingredients, or the steps you have to take to you know, create that hype, that demand, that momentum. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, we gotta seed it. So I got permission to maybe seed I forget how many pairs, hundred or something like that. Um, I I didn't when I first moved to LA. I maybe know knew about three or four celebrities just through like the the Yeezy thing, but I was just hitting up everyone like, yo, I heard you like used to date like the manager of Big Sean, like you know, you know. And uh, so for three months straight, just rolled up my sleeves and was waking up at two in the morning. Oh, blah blah blah's in the studio, and I would just go. And what I love about that, mm. you're you're not in marketing. For Versace, mm -hmm. you're not in talent management for Versace. You're a designer, yeah. right? You know why did you feel that sense of responsibility, like to roll the sleeves up and be like, "Now nah, I'm gonna grind and make this thing pop." I think going back to like being ten and listening to my dad, like you know, grinding. I just felt like I needed to take it into my own hands because this was like my shot. Like mm -hmm. this was kind of like, you know, this was like that tryout, right? Love and, it. and and like the shoe probably could have been like successful without that, but I wanted to like ensure its success because it's like it was like the perfect storm of like brand, product, and like energy, right? Yep. So I was like, this needs to like, this This will, this will, if it's not already there, this will do it, right? So I just started getting in touch with people. Do um, you realize you're doing what your pops did, working the phone? 100%, 100%. Realize? I thought about that I thought about that a lot, and I've told him recently. And uh, so then I get put in touch with two chains, right? We ended up meeting. He's like, our shoe is fire. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> exactly, exactly, right? So we, so we meet. And uh, immediately, like we 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 re it, it, we uh, hit it off. We hit it off. Um, I, I really think that the fact that we are the same, he sees me as like a genuine creative, and you know, I, I don't I don't think it would have worked the same way if I was just some like corporate guy in a suit. Got it. I think the fact that like he saw me and him, and I saw me and him. I, th I said the same thing twice, but you get what I'm saying. Um, I think that made it. I think that made it work. You know what I mean? I think. Like I, I gave him a lot of transparency and I wasn't like speaking corporate talk with him. I was just like telling him what it was. And mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, he, he respected that. And I, I also, you know, think that because he got to know me, he wanted to support me and, and see me succeed. So mm -hmm. um, he kind of like hopped on board and he, I brought him to Milan with me for the first show. And I'll never forget, like I met him at his hotel. Um, we were like having a few drinks and then we like hopped in the van, went to the venue hop out 30 cameras you know he's chilling like like he doesn't care like this is, this is his life yeah. but like the italians are like titty boy titty boy <laughs> like it was like crazy right and uh and then like we were walking in and i was just like i'm, I'm pisces i'm emotional i was emotional i was a bro like this is this means so much to me like thank you so much like mm -hmm. this is like a moment in my life i don't even remember what he said because it was just like wah, wah, wah. like i was just like on another planet there's a picture of me we could put it up me like walking behind him, like coming in, and I'm just like wide eyed as fuck. Like just, you know, um, it's happening. It's, it's all happening. Yeah, it was crazy. It's happening, it was crazy. Penny Lane. So yeah, it was just it was surreal, and it was it was a moment, and so to create the shoe, and then to have all of his support, and you know, and Donatella's support, and it was a, a very surreal time that just all kind of came at once, mm -hmm. um, because it all just kind of like started from an email or a, a LinkedIn message. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, and then just like the stars kind of aligned, I guess. My boy Salehi, he hard too. I don't know any of these people. I know Donatella. Who's Salehi? He actually designed the um, the chain reaction, like created the shoe and everything. He and he a brother, so. Mm, okay. That's cool. why we got to do good. that. Yes. That's the new wave. Mm, that's super dope. You mentioned 
Chains being very supportive and, and you know and wanting obviously the shoe to be successful and him to be a part of it, but you know maybe equally as important wanting you to be successful. Yeah, you know we've talked just you know because I don't know if you remember how we met. We mm-hmm. met at Mav's house in story. Akron, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, and I remember walking in and it's like I'm going there to meet Mav. Obviously, it's his house. Bron, Rich Paul, a couple mm-hmm. other friends, Randy. What's up to the fellas if they're listening? Um, and um, I remember you're outside. <laughs> The outside just chilling by like the garage, yeah, yeah. and you're wearing these like bar- the Barack pants, <laughs> you're in the Barack like sweats. Yeah, yeah. I see you, see me, and like I'm like, yo, what's good, mm-hmm. Dap? Mm-hmm. You good? Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm good. I walk inside. I don't think anything of it. Whatever, whatever. And then there's probably like I don't know, 10, 12 people in the house, and Mav goes, "Hey, did you meet a uh, Salehi?" And I'm like, "No, who, who, who the fuck Salehi? So who?" He's like, Salehi, he's like, he's a footwear designer at Versace. I'm like, oh, that's dope. In my mind, I'm like, there's no way the guy wearing the fucking Barack Obama pants and uh-huh. the thing is like a Versace designer. <laughs> Zero shot. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, I haven't met him. He's like, oh, I want to make sure I introduce you. I want to yeah, introduce yeah. you. Good people. And Mav's point, and you'll see where I'm going with this. He's like, we need to look out for him and make sure he wins. Mm-hmm. And I was like, bet, say no more. Right? Five minutes later, you walk in. He's like, Salehi, PR, PR. I'm like, this is Salehi? <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. We hit it off. We went to the game the next mm-hmm, day, right? Mm-hmm. Kicked it, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever. And the reason I tell that story is that, you know, in the time I spent with you, you know, that day and a half in Akron slash Cleveland, I remember us talking about how, like, the community had embraced you, right? Mm-hmm. My business partner, Mav, was like, yo, we got to make sure he wins. He's one of us, mm-hmm. Right. What has that felt like, and who have been some of those people that have been like, "Yo, I, I'm vested in your in your success. I want to see you win. It's important for all of us to see you win." Well, I mean, and like we already discussed him. Is one was Kanye. That was he was definitely one of the first. That guy Jeff as well, Jeff Henderson. But even with you guys, so that the way that all went down is, I think Mav like read a GQ article I did. Mm-hmm. He DMs me. He's like, "Bro, like I love your work. You know, it seems like you're doing it the right way." Blah blah blah. He was like, "Do you want to come out to Ohio for a game?" Mm-hmm. I was like. Like, I, I didn't really know who he was, but, I like, Drake rapped about him. I, like, heard the yeah. name a few times, yep. right? Like, bet. Like, I'm thinking he's going to put me on a PJ, <laughs> put me on a PJ on, on, on the way back. Yeah, like, I saw Entourage. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> so I hit him kind of, like, trying to, like, you know, navigate. I was like, so, uh-huh. like, do I need to bring my bag to the Clearport? Or, <laughs> you know, like, and then, <laughs> and then, uh, he made it clear. He was like, "No, nah, like you could, like if you fly out here." He's like, "I heard JetBlue got an eight fifteen. <laughs> exactly. He was like, "I know get you." <laughs> so basically, I flew out. He was like, "You could stay at the crib, though." So mm-hmm. I sh- I show up. I think he was like in some some business done or something like that. So I just chilled outside with I think his uncle or driver. Yeah, or yeah his like driver. That. Yeah. And uh, and then I thought to myself, I was like, maybe I'll meet LeBron this weekend. I didn't really put too much thought into it. I was like, maybe like at the game, like I'll get a dap or something, mm-hmm. right? And then literally five minutes later. Big Escalator SUV something yeah, rolls the up. Sprinter, the Sprinter. Yeah, rolls yeah. Up. yeah. LeBron yeah. pops. I was like, oh. like again, just like the Kanye moment with the burrito. Yeah. Played it cool. Though. I was like, oh, you know. Like, but on the inside, I'm screaming. Fam. Yeah, good it was good. Exactly. Good to see you yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, all you guys walk in, and then yeah, I just really felt embraced. And then just even to go to the game the next, I actually was, I thought it was kind of crazy that he let me into his crib. That's Mav though. I was Mav, like, Mavs, and I mean this as, uh, that's my brother. So mm-hmm. obviously, no, like, Mav's a people collector. Like mm-hmm. if Mav believes in you. Mm-hmm. There's nothing at that point in your career that you could do for Mavs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mavs like, oh no, like I see that, and I think in part it's because people probably didn't do it for him. Mm-hmm. But Mavs like, oh that, and you just said it. Oh, you're doing it the right way. Mm-hmm. How can I help? Come through. It, it, it might cost me at most a bottle of wine and mm-hmm. some great conversation. Mm-hmm. That's worth the price yeah, of yeah, admission. Absolutely. So that's always been him. So to hear that, it mm-hmm. doesn't surprise me. Where mm-hmm. it's like, no, nah, like he fucks with you. Like yeah. so, I thought it was genuine from the door. Like. But it's been dope to see, like, just obviously I've seen Chains and Chains and, and that whole team is amazing. Um, us, I've embraced you. I know you, mm-hmm. Puff, you've had conversations mm-hmm. with Puff and mm-hmm. how they've embraced you and Dame and all these people. Like, but you felt that love from the community, like, 100%. The support. 100%. And I don't take that for granted at all because I know that, I mean, that I think of all the things I bring to the table, that's one of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's been helpful. I mean, it's, it, it's, stra- it's strange because. Uh, I want to be supportive of my work, mm-hmm. but I think that's a part of the conversation. Mm-hmm. It, who was it? Oh, actually, no. It was that weekend we were talking about. I won't say the song, but Mav was talking about how some people, sometimes, black people feel. Uh, oh, I remember. Right? He was saying yes. that black people feel 
they have to support. to support. Yeah, they have to regardless support. of quality. Yes. Right. Yes. And he and was like, "That song is whack." Yeah, but yeah. Everyone felt like they had to support. Of course, I do. <laughs> so I remember the video. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, <laughs> so yeah. So I mean, I just you know I want to make sure that you know I have fans and support because I'm talented. But then at the same time, if they fuck with me, they fuck with me, right? Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I I want to be clear. I Paul Rivera. I'm saying this, not Salehi. Um, and answer however you see best fit. It's like you're working in an industry that let's just say you're not the typical mm-hmm. uh, cast for it, right? So mostly it's been, you know, not everyone, but generationally it's been, you know, older, it's been white, it's been gay, you mm-hmm. know, just the fashion, high fashion world. Is, um, how was it at first you navigating through that? Just navigating through that world, right? You said you didn't come from high fashion mm-hmm. and just kind of sum up where there are obstacles and there's obstacles in everything we do, but how was it navigating through that? Well, I would say the two... Or maybe how is it still? Yeah, so you're yeah. still in it, obviously. I would say the two things that kind of maybe like equipped me for it was A, Jeff Henderson teaching me just how to, you know, move in the corporate space because I do believe there's an art to that. And then also, um, I went to private school my entire life. So like I'm very used to being the minority. I'm very used to being different and I'm very used to to navigating that space in a way to make it work for me. Mm-hmm. So I would say with those two... Um, I guess tools or whatever that that was extremely helpful um but it's 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 a daily task i would say you know mm-hmm. what i mean for whether it's age race or sexuality mm-hmm. um i would say you always have to navigate you know we're, we live in a very very sensitive time so you just have to make sure you're being respectful of people and and aware of people and uh it, it's it's definitely it's 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 un, i don't want to say it's unfortunate but it, i don't think it should be a part of the creative conversation right of if we're course. creating like we don't need to talk about this anthropology stuff of right? course um but it's a part of the conversation because that's where we are as a as a planet and as yeah. a nation. So it's it's a part of it. You know? Yeah. So I always like to you know I have two more questions slash comments for you before I get you out of here. Um, and by the way, you know, super gracious with this time, you landed and came straight here. Right here. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, which by the <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell this story. So Salehi calls me yesterday and he goes, you know, hey, I'm excited to do the show. Just you know, do you need anything from me? Should I be thinking of anything? Whatever. And I'm like, no, no, no. We're just gonna. Drink some wine and have some great conversation. And let me back up. So he's like, man, I just landed from Milan. You know, it's a long flight, whatever, whatever. But I want to check in with you. And I said, oh, man, no, we're good. We're just going to have some conversation. I said, what do you want to drink on the show? He goes, I, I, you know, I watch all your shows. I, know you, I notice you guys always drink red. I drink white, but it's whatever. I'll get down with whatever. You know, I know you guys are fancy. And I'm like, and the last two sentences out of your mouth were, I just landed from Milan uh-huh. and I drink white. But I'm the fancy one. Neither here nor there. Yeah. Uh, before we get out of here, two two more things. One is I always like to leave our guests with, uh, you know, we have a lot of like young entrepreneurial listeners, viewers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for that, you know, 18, 19, 20 year old kid who sketches and has a sketchbook and loves that and now is reading like your articles, mm-hmm. right? Reading your articles and is putting your articles up and all that stuff. It's like, you know, it's it's. There's probably never been a greater time of opportunity, but there's probably never been it's probably never been more crowded space mm-hmm. than it is right now as well, right? What advice do you have for like the nineteen, twenty year old Salehi that's out there trying to get on? I would say just to like do and to like ask. And and by that I mean like I get like DMs like every day where these kids like are asking for like the secret. Like they think I'm gonna be like all right, like you eat two blueberries and then you spin in the circle and then like Tinker's going to show up. You're right? welcome. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just not that. And like, it's really about the journey and like, you know, it's about pay less and it's about like the mistakes and it's about learning from your mistakes and it's about not being afraid to ask people for things. You know, like literally the, the, the reason I, I'm in the position I am in is because I asked for it, like 100%. And like, I, I can't tell you how many people I encounter where they're like, oh, I'm afraid to ask because... Like what's gonna ha- like the worst thing that can happen is no. So like, well, mm-hmm. what are you waiting for? And then and then also like I get a lot of just messages about like, well, how do I get started? You have like Google in front of you. Like you can literally figure out how to mm-hmm. do like anything. Mm-hmm. And I just think that like kids these days are just so like inundated with like just scrolling and like wasting that time. It's like create and like you may do something completely wrong and horrible, but then you like can look at it, analyze it, and then like grow from that and like do the next thing. And so. I would just say that just it's really important to just like do because I just feel like a lot of people these days are like are like uh, in almost more of an audience. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that's why I get really excited when I meet doers and I and it's a it's a very like specific kind of energy because it's it's rare. Yeah, and I yeah. think you know a common thread in your as I as I hear you about your journey talk about your journey is 
you've been a doer, right? It's like, you know, whether it was chasing Kanye down the street, right, mm-hmm. for an opportunity, or, or whether it's sending a cold email, right? Um, I think a lot of times, like, this generation is, like, afraid to fail, mm-hmm. right, or afraid that they don't have it all figured out. When mm-hmm. I had Mav on the show, we talked about that. It's like, you have people that are afraid to fail and people that want the business plan to be so perfect that they never get started. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm-hmm. no, like, start this shit and figure yeah, exactly. it out. It's like a portfolio. It's never done. 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, if you even go back, and hopefully no one does, you listen to, like, the first podcast I ever did, it's cringeworthy. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, <laughs> uh, right? But it's like you're doing it like anything yeah, yeah. else. 10,000 hours, it's reps. Absolutely. Right? And you get better. So mm-hmm. um, I'll leave you with this. It's like, you know, when obviously he's a good friend to both of us. It's like Mav, actually both of them, Mav and LeBron always say this, and it's super interesting and super real. It's the greatest thing that success brings you Mm. is the opportunity to have success on now a bigger platform, right? So if you're that dude in high school, you got a college scholarship. Mm -hmm. If you're that dude during March Madness, you get drafted. You get drafted, you're the guy on the team. You're the best player on the team, you make the Mm all-star team. All those things, right? You came out rookie of the year, huge win, bigger probably than anyone mm-hmm. you I can probably even speak for the legend Donatella and I don't think anyone saw that coming how big the success has been or like what you've created a surprise, yeah. right mm-hmm. now you gotta do it again <laughs> right? uh-huh. like what's that like is it pressure is it excitement is it opportunity like do you realize that like what's well I would say well two things is one I'm somewhat of a pessimist I'm not a pessimist but I remember after the easy thing and like creating like like product for easy I thought I thought to myself like there's no way I can top this mm-hmm. and I did so I don't know if I necessarily have the vision of how I can, but I'm confident that I can. And then, um, what did you say? You said, how can I top it? Um, yeah, is there pressure? Is there pressure to oh, top is there it? Pressure? Like, what's well, next? Is, I, I would say the weirdest thing is now is that this is the first time in my career I have so many eyes on me. Mm-hmm. You know, in the past, I was like almost designing for my boss. If my boss was happy, mm-hmm. I was happy. I, got, mm-hmm. I get paid, boss happy, mm-hmm. job done. Mm-hmm. But now, like, there's, I, like, I have, like, fans. Like, I've... I've been approached like all over the world. It's like, it's really surreal. Like I've been approached all over the world by people that are like fans of me, of my work. It's, it doesn't, it, like I love it. It's great, but it's, it, it doesn't seem real. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that, but also at the same time, it's like a lot of pressure. Cause now I know that people are like paying attention. There's expectations. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm confident, but then at the same time, like, uh, like people, like I've been asked in a few interviews, people say like, "What next?" I don't, I have no fucking idea, to be completely <laughs> honest. But at the same time, I'm confident. Right. So that's the the both sides of it, right? Right. Um, and then like moving forward, uh, I've been given the opportunity to get off some personal collaborations. So um, I'm going to be collaborating with, <laughs> and I'm going to be collaborating with. <laughs> you can bleep those out. Okay. Done. And, uh, done. And uh, so then, yeah, and then I'm excited about that because that's just an opportunity to get out some more like individual design chops. And, and this will be this will be Salehi. Salehi Bimbri X. Wow. You know, brand. Um, two, wow. Two currently. Um, that's huge. That, yeah, I'm really excited about that's that. Huge. Really, they're, they're big brands. Uh, it'll be next year. I'll just say next year. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that's just cool. I mean, as, a, as creatives, you know, we always like have our main things, but it's always nice to like have fun in different areas, so that's what I'm kind of getting to do now, and it's gonna be really exciting, and you'll 100% see, and you'll 100% get your pair and your, your whole kit. Love it, I'm excited and, already, uh, I'm excited for you. And yeah, just like good things to come, and you know, I'm just I'm just really like happy these days, like I'm very, uh, I'm very just like excited about what's to come, because you know, I would have been completely happy just like designing basketball shoes for like, mm-hmm. you know, Team Jordan. <laughs> like that would have, no, I would have been like ecstatic yeah. to do yeah. that, right? We did it, Brooklyn. Yeah, we did it. We did it right? again, you know? So the fact that now I'm in this space and I've created some cool shoes that people seem to like, it seems like there's just like, you know, that chant song. I feel like blessings keep falling in my mm. lap. That's really how it feels. Mm. Um, so I'm just really trying to like take it all with like, you know, and like with good grace and uh, keep it, keep it moving and, people seem to like what I'm making. So I'm just trying to keep that energy. Like, you know, a lot of people have a lot of haters and I haven't gotten them just yet. I might mm-hmm. be jinxing myself by mm-hmm. saying this, but uh, they'll hate on this podcast. <laughs> so like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to keep it positive and put out, and put out good stuff. You know what I mean? so. so before I let you get out of here and, and it's, it may be a difficult question for you to answer mm-hmm. because you're, you know, at the, it's weird. You're in a weird, at least from my purview, you're in a weird space because I feel like you're just, taking off in your mm. career but you're established in your career mm. as well so it's it's a it's an interesting kind of juxtaposition when it's all said and done you retire you me and mav and Bron on a boat somewhere mm. you know eating cotton candy grapes that's actually a real <laughs> I've thing had, i've had them <laughs> <laughs> that they're means they're life delicious. is good they're delicious. 
<laughs> uh-huh. He said they're delicious. <laughs> um, um, what do you want, you know, what do you want people to say when your name comes up? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Um, well, I would say, you know, the number one compliment I get that I hold close to my heart is that I'm normal and genuine, right? And like, because I, you know, I've, there's obviously the stereotype and I can confirm it that in the high fashion space, there aren't the best people. And I'm not saying that about my company. I love of course, yeah. my company, but just the world, right? There's mm-hmm. a lot of egos and whatever. Um, and a lot of, like a lot of people tell me like, wow, like you're so normal. Mm-hmm. And like, I really like, I value that because, um, well, for one, I think it's strange that that's like an a compliment, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but like, uh, as opposed to, yeah, exactly. Right. right but like, right. I value that, you know, cause I, I, I really think that people somehow, through like social media or whatever, like they they see the energy. And I, so I kind of want to like maintain that. And so whenever I, you know, fans approach me on the street and... Yo, Siri. Siri, we weren't talking to you, Siri. Yo, Siri's just, wow, we, this is scary, bro. <laughs> we yeah. weren't, I'll be at the crib and my, my Google Home will go off. She'll be mm. like, sorry, I didn't get that. I'm like, I wasn't talking to Yo, you. Yo. I unplug it's, it. It's like, scary. It's scary. I, I lost my train of thought completely. What was that? <laughs> so, what so you were just saying in terms of you know, some real people coming up to you still. Yeah, so just even, you know, that whole experience and uh, I just, I kind of want them all to walk away being like, wow, he was like a cool guy. Like, he was mm. really nice because that's what I wanted, you know? Mm. Um, so I would say when it's all said and done, I just kind of want to be known as a good dude. Like, I'm, I'm the design part, like, I think that, you know, that's tangible. Yeah, the so work like, will speak for itself. The work will speak for right. itself, but right. like, I would like, you know, to be remembered as like a good guy. Yeah. Positive, but- positive. Man. No better way to end it. Yeah. Salehi the good guy. Thanks for yeah, coming yeah. on the show, brother. Thank you very much. Cheers yeah. to Cheers. you. Appreciate it.